minutes. I, I got to tell you, I, I am absolutely entranced and enthralled by, by what you're saying here, Doc. I mean, this, this is good stuff. People need to hear this and understand the, the, the dangers of traditions, I suppose. Folks, you're listening to the Hagman Hagman Report on this, the 19th day of March 2014. I'm Doug Hagman with me in studio, Joe Hagman, and our very special guest, Doc Marquis. Visit his website. It's a God thing, Productions 777. Dot com. Fantastic information. Semiramis has a son named Temuz. Well, Temuz was just like his father. You see, we find out in, uh, in Genesis that it says, Nimrod was a mighty hunter um, before the Lord. That's an exact quote. Now, the word you need to look at there is before. Now, remember, the KJV 1611 translation of the Holy Scripture is written in the King's English, or the Middle English back then. The word before in, in the Middle English is actually the word for against. So Nimrod was not a mighty hunter before the Lord or for the Lord. He was a mighty hunter against God. You ever hear of someone who stands before the enemy? That person is standing against the enemy. That's what the word back then, before, meant, to stand against. Um, Nimrod was a mighty hunter against God. He wanted to be God himself. Just like, you know, Lucifer. It's an old story. So like his father, Temuz started growing up to be a mighty hunter himself. However, when he was 40 years old, he was killed by a wild boar while he was out on the hunt. Time goes on, and Semiramis eventually, like all life upon the face of the earth, dies. According to the ancient traditions now, the next year, a huge multicolored egg fell out of the heavens and fell into the Euphrates River. It washed onto the shore onto a pile of wicker reeds, and out of that huge egg and her new reincarnated form as the spring goddess was Easter, a.k.a. Semiramis. And whoever found um, her sacred egg, the first person who ever found her sacred egg, was supposed to have received a special blessing from the goddess herself. Now, let's think about this for a second. We know that Easter... It's going to be happening in a number of weeks. Now, something happens before Easter, according to Catholic tradition. Kindly turn to Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 14. Ezekiel 8, 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. On the surface, it makes no sense at all. These women are sitting before the door of the temple itself, the house of God, weeping over Tammuz. Well, you see, these women were weeping and wailing, refusing to eat, fasting, giving things up because of Tammuz. You see, according to ancient occult practice, those women would be there for 40 years days exactly. The reason it was 40 days that they were there fasting, weeping, wailing, not having given up things and all this was because every single one of those 40 days represented one of the years of Tammuz's life. Remember, he lived 40 years and was killed by a wild bull. That's why that occult practice went on for 40 days. And this is where you get Lent from. Lent is a pagan holiday, or a pagan, uh, purely pagan? Practice. Lent is exactly 40 days in Lent. And aren't you supposed to sacrifice and give up things during that 40 days, just like yes, those sir. women were? Yes, sir. That's hmm. what's going on in that verse, Ezekiel chapter eight fourteen. So this is God's anger over this commemoration of this pagan God ritual is, of Lent. God is beyond ticked at this point, because let's go over this now. As the spring goddess, Semiramis, a.k.a. Easter, was a fertility goddess. You look at all the goddesses, the major goddesses back then, 
they were fertility goddesses. Why? Because once the occult religion left Babylon after the languages were confused and everyone had to leave, they didn't forget their occult religion. They took it with them. When they established the, um, the Egyptian Empire, the um, Medo-Persian Empire, the Greco um, Empire, the Roman Empire, they didn't forget their occult religion. They brought it with them. The only thing that changed was the name according to the cultural linguistics at the time. The practice was still the same. Nothing changed but the name. It just says, uh, what, let me think off the top of the head. If it, um, once it left Babylon, okay, she would have been called Easter, then eventually um, in Asia, Sibyl, then Xingmu in China. To the Druids, she would have been known as the Virga Paratura. In Egypt, she was Isis. The Ephesians called her Diana. The Germans called her Herpa. The Rome, she was known as Venus, if you remember. And according to the Catholic religion, she's known as Mary. Nothing changed in the occult world but the name. That's it. That's why these occult practices go on to this very day. By the time, and t tell me if I'm wrong here. Oh, and mind you, back then, that sacred egg, and it's still sacred in many countries to this very day because um, back then... There was all, they always had a huge egg because it became part of an occult ritual known as the Mysteries of Bacchus. Then in Rome, they carried a huge egg down on the center of the Roman um, capital itself that was known as the Procession of Ceres. To this very day, China still uses a bronze-colored egg in their sacred festivals. And the Druids used the egg as one of their most holy of all symbols. So these things, these occult practices, went on from one culture to another. Let's, let, let, let me ask you a question here. What does an Easter bunny and the resurrection of Christ have in common? The Easter course, bunny and the... Uh, nothing in common. I well, think fertility. I, I mean, fertility, uh, Doc, uh, given the symbolic... Uh, aspect of, of, a, of a rabbit? Oh, you are, too, you are just too clever for me. Because yeah. you're absolutely right. The reason they used a bunny for part of this story was because Semiramis was a fertility goddess. And what is the fastest procreating creature known to anyone on the face of the earth? And that's why they chose the bunny as the animal totem for Easter, the goddess Easter, a.k.a. Semiramis. That's how you get the Easter bunny. Remember a couple of decades ago, men used to get their, three, their new three-piece suits for Easter ceremony, and women would get new hats and all that stuff? Remember the high priest would be getting new robes, and the priestesses would be getting new bonnets? That's where you get the um, new suits and the new hats from. That's exactly where that practice came from. Think about this. Isn't it during Easter that, you know, people are giving out spring flowers and you have all this Easter candy and, you know, these sweet breads that were all um, sacrifices and offerings to Moloch way back when? Isn't uh, that yep. what we're yep. doing now? Okay, that's right. Okay, back then, uh, during the time and, and rituals you're talking about, they brought the... Spring flowers and candles, candies, I'm sorry, candies. Well, I like and the sweet threads and such yep. to the Tower of Babylon. Oh, boy, okay. This is where it comes from. If we And this was a family affair. If we look at Jeremiah chapter 44, see, it's 17 through 19. It says, now remember, the Queen of Heaven, in the Bible they're referring to is Semiramis, a.k.a. Easter. Whatever cultural name you want to go... When they talk about the Queen of Heaven, they're talking about the very first name, Semiramis. It says, Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 17 through 19, But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burnt incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings 
and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men. The Hebrew word for cakes is the word kavan. Literally translated, the word kavan means buns, just like a hot cross bun. Jeremiah right. chapter 7 in Jeremiah chapter 7, seven verses 17 to 20, it says, See thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not? provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast and upon the tree of the field and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Let me tell you, God is kicked at this stuff. There's got to be some level of foreknowledge. I mean, this, all of this, what we're talking about, predates the crucifixion and resurrection. Yet um, we're talking... but, yes, yeah. but you have to remember, the crucifixion and resurrection was taken over by a new occult religion known as Catholicism, and they kept the tradition going. It wasn't the Christian church. It was the Catholic church that kept it going next. We read right here that God was thoroughly ticked. He was so ticked. He said, My fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground. That covers just about everything. And it shall burn and shall not be quenched. This is how angry God was at such occult practices. And do you really think he changed his mind? In his own word, God says, I am the Lord thy God. I changeth not. Let's think about this. Well, according to tradition, when Semiramis came back as the spring goddess, a.k.a. Easter, what did she come in? An egg. <laughs> A <laughs> multicolored egg. Why do you okay. think we're dying eggs to this very day? Wow, to hear you say that makes me think I, I, I never want to see an Easter egg coloring kit again. You better hold on to this because remember... What did that egg wash ashore and land on? Oh. Wicker reeds. Wicker reeds. And what are Easter baskets made out of? Wicker. Wicker. And what happened to the first person who would find the sacred egg of Easter? They would receive oh. a special blessing from the goddess, first. wouldn't they? Wow. Why do you think they have Easter egg hunts? They're hunting for the sacred egg of Easter to receive a blessing from her. My goodness. And, and this is all pagan. This is all... This is, anci this is as ancient as it gets, folks. I know my occult history. I spent decades in the Illuminati um, learning this stuff. I've spent the last three and a half years exposing this stuff. I've been doing this for almost six decades, folks. I've got this fairly well down by now. And I don't say that to brag. I'm saying this to give you a warning. You guys ever go to a sunrise service? Sure. When Christ sure. was supposed to be resurrected? Yep. Why? Tradition. Let's hear like it for Christmas tradition, day. right? Why was it sunrise? Why well, wasn't it in the middle of the afternoon? Because Jesus rose, uh, the discovery, the tomb, the empty grave would be discovered in sunrise, or at sunrise, right? Okay. But, um, but, that's, you, that's you, Doug? You got the Bible there? Uh, yep, I do. Let's, let's put your words to the test. Turn to John chapter 20, verse 1. Chapter 20, 20, verse 1. Day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the uh, sepulcher. sepulcher and the sepulcher, see, the tomb where Christ was buried. Back up. Okay. It said when it was yet dark. Dark. It didn't say sunrise, did it? No. When it was yet dark. It was dark outside when Christ was resurrected. It wasn't sunrise, it wasn't sunset, it wasn't afternoon, it wasn't light. The God of all creation knows the difference. He said it was dark outside. There have been sunrise services because it was Easter. The goddess Easter, a.k.a. Semiramis, whose egg fell out of the heavens during sunrise. 
my goodness. All right. And Unless Dr. we're not reading our Bibles and disobeying the warning in Colossians 2, 8, where it says not to go after the traditions of men. 